well. So if you could maybe switch your seats back just a little bit, see if that works, especially the front row here. No one sitting there. Different for 30 years. 
And I just want to say, if any of you know any researchers or doctors who want to study me, I am available at <laughs> But my big message is, there's no money in broccoli. And let's take a look at that. My best friend, Lori, also died of breast cancer. We took Lamaze classes together. She never made it uh, old enough to see her kids come out of grade school. And there I am at Smith Barney, working Race for the Cure because it was the first year that Smith Barney brought it to a lot of cities and St. Louis was one of them. And my friend Lori was at that race. And what's interesting about this is that they had a, a dinner for the highest investors who were donating to Race for the Cure. And they flew in more money managers who were in pharmaceutical industries. These were the folks who were going to make money off of the C word, you can't see the cure. The and so they would talk to our donors about investing it's in these companies. The and this is where money often is. We try to, as a former investigative reporter, two Emmys and the National Press Club Award during my 18 years, follow the money. And here it is, a Smith Barney. Interesting. Um, as Smith Barney was really trying to focus on investing in money. Sorry, but it just hurt your eyes. Okay. Sometimes I find the the equipment that I work with is just it's like frozen up now. So let's see if we can revive it. I've never had actually this happen before where it just completely froze. All our connections are working. Okay, well, we'll give it a moment. What's really interesting is that if you look, at the next slides would show that Race for the Cure was actually funded in part by No Play and Kentucky Fried Chicken, huge amounts of money. And it's no surprise, I suppose, that these kinds of investments and donors were happening. And I'm really sorry, folks. This. Uh, you never know what kind of equipment you're working with, and I didn't bring my own projector, and it's just, if anybody has any ideas, what if you just reboot it, or at least hard, you know, shut down, reboot? It just froze. What else do I have a computer for? So, I'd like to advance it. Huh? Of course, you walk in, and she <laughs> <laughs> just stays. <laughs> was stealing gold-plated plated plumbing for a summer, uh, summer home, got a grand jury investigating, and then the day I left Miami, Miami Herald did this story saying, wow, that was interesting, and then they played catch-up. And then uh, a few months later, the, um, uh, the title uh, of the race rebellion. Pardon me? The race rebellion of Miami. Yeah. Remember this. Yes, Time and Newsweek said my story in part was responsible for the riots. So I had this reputation of um, <laughs> digging up a little dirt and causing uh, riots. So um, I got a couple Emmys there. And then what's interesting is in this year, 1984, it was the same year my, my uh, first sister got breast cancer for the second time. And I almost died of a colon blockage. Won't bore you with all the details, but I had natural childbirth three times. There was nothing more painful than that. Doctor said I needed to be on medicine the rest of my life. And what's interesting is if you look up here, you can't probably see it, but 1984, uh, back here on my counter, beans and grains. I went macrobiotic at that point because I thought that was the way to dodge cancer. And eventually I had three kids made the change to financial services. And what's interesting about this, I don't expect you to read it, I don't want you to read it, but I was the number one market performer right here in 2001. Remember that year? And then 2002, I was still in the top 10 list um, right in this grouping here. And what's interesting about it is I was the only woman on that list. This was my downtown branch of St. Louis. And 
You don't often get rewarded in financial services for doing this kind of thing. The, the only honor I got was these emails. <laughs> so as a result, um, I never made more than $20,000 a year in my five years there. And those Wall Street bonuses that you heard about did not happen for <coughs> me. So I did get an award working in my uh, socially responsible investing. So during this time, I was sort of cooped up in working lunches where the only choice I got was what kind of topping I wanted on my pizza. And I put on 25 pounds. We had a lot of client dinners. We were told to go have dinners at Morton's that we had to pay for ourselves. And I really uh, put on a lot of weight. We moved to Florida, and then I started taking the weight off. But what I want you to see is I'm actually a star McDougaler. Does anybody know John McDougall's side who's speaking here? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So go here if you get a chance. Um, in 1999, up here, look, as a vegan, 135 my total cholesterol. Go to work at Smith Barney in one year, jumps up to 203. How many of you have seen the movie, Super Size Me? Yeah, yeah, that was me over the period of five years. It stays up here, I get desperate. Uh, I'm trying Athens because I'm so desperate. And you say, well, why? why? Why would you want to do that as an animal rights person? I cover the worst animal abuse stories in the country. But I am terrified of cancer. So I am willing and desperate to do anything. And uh, during this time, of course, I get a coronary, coronary calcification, and then fibroid tumors. My cholesterol is still staying up. And then I find myself in the emergency room a second time with hemorrhaging fibroids. And, and the doctors wanted to do an immediate hysterectomy. At which point, I called my regular OB, who says, Helen, go back to that plant-based diet and call me in the morning. Three weeks later, all signs of menopause are gone, no hysterectomy needed. How many women in this country could be saved from having a hysterectomy by doing this kind of thing? Best kept secret in America, but no money in broccoli. There's my weight, tracking up at 150 in June 2005 and dropping six months later to 131. But my best success is not me. It's a woman who took my cancer project class. She loses 120 pounds in eight months wow. without wow. counting a single calorie. How cool is that? Wow. She loved the food. And she had been uh, diagnosed with multiple myeloma when she came to my class and was given up for dead. Mm -hmm. And folks were just, uh, she was just in despair. And she is still alive today, eight years later. So wow. very cool. The newspaper did a story on her, but that's as far as it went. You would think doctors would be lining up at her door. A woman, I did a talk recently at Whole Foods in Miami. This woman just walked up to me. She says, I've lost 130 pounds. And she brings out her driver's license, which I was so excited I didn't get it in focus. But you can kind of see that before and her after picture. But what we really want to focus on is money. And here is a couple of charts that really describe the desperateness and the distance in the different income classes. And you can see the top line is the 99%. They are getting richer. And the bottom line is the 1% that we've heard so much about. And it's my belief that going forward, poverty and uh, the struggle for income is going to be a huge issue. And I kind of been joking in my cooking classes, I hope you love this food because we're all going to be vegan in about 30 years anyway. And there are some incredible stories out right now, some, some uh, research that shows that this is true. So one in six are living below the poverty level. If we do the math, $22,000, and we're just going to do a little math because I love it so much. Four people is $5,840 uh, $5, per person if you divide the poverty level by four people. Now, a good financial planner will tell you that a fourth of your income is supposed to go to food. <laughs> How many of you are spending that much or, or less on food? Anybody? Yeah, we're all over the top on that. A few of you, yes. That's probably because you've been calling tips and high so if you divide the days of the year by the amount of what it is per person, look what you end up with, $4 a day. Wow. And yet the government says that we don't eat enough fruits and vegetables because they're not affordable, really. And here are the slides that I wanted to tell you about. The whole $4.2 million from KFC has gone to Race for the Cure. And this is all off their website. This really didn't take a lot of investigative reporting to do this. And Susan B. Coleman here donated from Yo Play over 13 years, $30 million. No money in broccoli. So what are you going to do? You say, OK, this is depressing stuff. How do we really eat on $4 a day? People always say, can you eat organic on $4 a day? I mentioned that organics and 
genetically altered or if genetically one of those are not in the title of the book. However, I do have some tips in the book on how to do this. So if you go to this website, localharvest.org, you will find all these different local farms and CSAs. How many belong to a CSA? Very good. Community supported agriculture. The advantages are you get fresh foods and you learn new ways to cook and kids connect with the farm and it is cheap. And what these are is they give you, you pay a certain amount uh, per share and you go every week or sometimes the one that's here actually delivers to your home. I wish we had that in Florida where I'm from. But uh, you get four bags in our neighborhood of these ginormous vegetables and it just keeps you going for a couple of weeks. And it's a very cheap way. I figured for my investment it was about $15 to $25 a week for four bags full of great, mostly organic produce. Most of the farms don't have the organic certification because it's more expensive. Often if you volunteer at these farms, you can see what they're doing and they need organic standards anyway. And if you volunteer, they'll give you a discount on the share. And if you really volunteer, they'll give you a share for free. So that's very cool. Other things you can do, you can have your front yard looking like that. Not here, but this is in Florida where I live. Or you can turn it into something like this with earth boxes. Who has earth boxes? Anybody? Of course, you have such great soil out here. Excellent. Uh, in Florida, it's a little challenge to grow things, so um, we're growing plastic there. Yeah. Sand dunes, yeah, not the same thing in Florida. So that's why growing in a container can be a way to do it cheaply. Now, people say, really? Four dollars a day? And I point to John McDougall's newsletter in March of 2008 where he says three dollars a day. And that's where I got the idea to write the book. In addition to seeing so many stories, seeing women who were weighing three, four hundred pounds, saying that they were on food stamps and loading up their carts with Twinkies with a microphone shoved in their face like I used to be, with, as a reporter, and they would say, you just can't eat well on food stamps or on a budget. And I thought, I've got to combine my background, which also includes, by the way, six years as a Little Asian League leader. So I was working with the breastfeeding information and support group. As doctors said, you better do something really different with your life. So yeah. And my, my sister, the one who now has had breast cancer three times, breastfed four children six months each. And I thought, holy guacamole, if that didn't work to prevent breast cancer, I need to be looking at this very seriously. So what I did for my book is I went around back uh, the old-fashioned way and started writing down food prices uh, on an Excel sheet like this. And I used my smartphone to scan things, but that wasn't always accurate. So I just uh, started doing this in 2008 at big box stores. Got this software called Living Cookbook, and it spit out a recipe like this. So if I entered the price of oats as, um, as uh, 10 cents, there it is down at the bottom, and it would make all the calculations within the recipe based on the price I entered. And then, of course, I went out and bought the, the ingredients for all the recipes in my book just to make sure that it worked. And in my book, every recipe has a price associated with it. It's only one of two books that I'm aware of in print that does this. Neil Barnard, in the foreword to my book, said that I was the perfect person to write this book because of my extensive financial background. And so what I would do is go around taking pictures with my smartphone of prices. And here, let's just take a little uh, run in the park here. 4.3 cents for the price of beans, and 4.7, not much time later. So there you go. Not much of a change. I had a woman in my last VegFest uh, in Portland stand up and say, you know, I have been shopping, using, buying beans in bulk for many, many years for our school system, and I'm telling you the price of beans hasn't changed in 25 years. Wow. So here's my map, and if you remember nothing else from my presentation, this is it. An ounce of beans in the dry bag, uh, big bulk, bulky bags, about $15. So one ounce is a nickel, two ounces dry is a fourth cup dry, and that is a serving, four ounces, costs a dime for a serving of beans in big box, in big box stores. Now, people say, ew, you gotta shop at Walmart, and I'm saying, I'm not recommending shopping at Walmart. But I've spent the last four years on the floors of Walmart tracking prices just like I did as a reporter, tracking the consumer price index. And look what I'm finding, I got a lot of people who are shopping at Walmart. And in hamburger here, five pounds, 30% uh, fat, 70% protein, maybe a little pink slime. It is 14 cents an ounce. Now it's jumped to 18 cents an ounce. And let's look at more expensive cuts of meat. Ribeye is 71 cents an ounce, the most expensive cut of meat. 
and I'm sorry, ten to one here at ninety-four cents an ounce. So let's have fun with math because I love math. <laughs> ten cents for a serving of bean protein for cooking the thirty percent hamburger is seventy-two cents for a serving. That's seven times more expensive. Beef tenderloin is thirty-seven times more expensive than a serving of beans. And if we look at the math more with beef tenderloin, four ounces, three dollars and seventy-two cents. Eight ounces, seven dollars and forty-four cents. Sixteen ounces, fourteen dollars and eighty-eight cents. And these are just Walmart prices. These aren't even having anything to do with what you would find in a restaurant, which is where a lot of people order their beef tenderloin. So beans are full of fiber, they're protein rich, low in calories, low in calories, and no cholesterol. So 72 cents a serving versus $3.72. Quite a bargain, quite a bargain. So 18 cents for a serving of canned beans, if you have to stay with cans. And frozen 38 cents a serving for the black-eyed peas. Now what's really cool is this organization called Feeding Children Everywhere. They're based in Orlando, and they formed after the 60-minute story said that kids were starving in Orlando. So there they are in the, in the uh, Orlando area, and talk about buying in bulk. This is serious bulk, and look what they're doing with it. They make little baggies just like this. It's kind of like Fantastic Foods. If you ever brought, if you ever bought their uh, lentil and grain product, it's basically lentils, it's rice, and a little sea salt for the minerals, and dehydrated vegetables. And this serving, I'll show you the pictures, six meals at 25 cents a serving. That's what they're doing with this stuff. And they're shipping it anywhere there are starving kids, using these big vats of bulk items, and there's the bag with the lentils, the rice. And instead of using processed soy that they often use overseas, uh, or peanut butter balls, they're using real food. So if they can do it on 25 cents a serving, I know that you can do it on four dollars a day. So I've had enough people at these, these sessions say, yes, it can be done, I've done it, depending on what you're doing. This was the Tampa Convention Center. They rented it out to do one of these, uh, packing all these bags and putting them together. It looked like white rice, is that true? Yes, it was white rice, but uh, we're working on that. So, a dollar for four meals. Lentil, there's the lentil casserole, and there's the vat as it's all assembled, and it cooks up into this. And compared to $17 for a medium-sized pizza. <laughs> My husband ordered that. <laughs> How many of you have mixed marriages where one of you is med and one of you is not? You know, I love uh, talking in the more progressive areas of the country because I don't get as many hands being raised, but that's actually going to be my next book, Divided Tables, because I live that life. And so many new vegans now are kind of jumping into this, and whoever they're living with is going, what? You're eating vegan? So there's a real need for this. So people say, how do you buy these big bags of beans and grains and store them so they last? Well, you get these hermetically sealed lids, and they've got a little rubber gasket there, and this is the way I have decorated my kitchen counters for the last 30 years. And there it is. You can see that yellow gasket. Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, tan gasket at the top and the yellow, beautiful um, grains there. That, is, um, that was uh, a little bit of millet. And so, and this is interesting too. I have a friend who owns a health food store, and she's like, I got this new device. Come here and put your finger on that little light, and it's going to measure your antioxidant level. And she said, You'll probably come score like in the middle of the chart here in the yellow area. She said, Most of the people who come in, score in the red area. Well, of course, as you can see, I'm at 58,000 on the total end. I got lots of antioxidants. That's what happens. Yeah. 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 A lot of vegan streets and great. Yeah. Well, just one more thing about that. So, of course, they have some vitamins you can buy that they guarantee will jump you from one category to the next in a month's time. Guess how much those vitamins cost? Uh -huh. <laughs> $35? I think kale is so much cheaper. <laughs> now here's the reason we're all going to be vegan in 30 years. We've had the worst drought, it is drying up the corn, and now reports are saying, according to this most recent one just two weeks ago, um, the Stockholm International Water Institute, there won't be enough water to feed 
9 billion people by 2050 if we follow the current rates of meat consumption as we are on to now. So right now, 20% of the world's daily protein comes from animal-based products. So the world population, according to the Stockholm Report, will have to cut back to 5% if we don't want to all be vegetarian by 2050. We can't produce more food because we already have 900 million people going hungry. And with 70% of all available water being in agriculture, growing more food to feed an additional 2 billion people by 2050 will place greater pressure on available water and land. And as I'm sure many of you know, the consumption of meat is really what drains the water supply. So what do you want? Hamburger and dairy, which has no fiber and plenty of Back. Hormones. I was a reporter in St. Louis, home of Monsanto. Oh. Anybody see the corporation? The movie yeah. The Corporation. Jane Acri, who stars in that movie, who tried to do a story about Monsanto, she and her husband, when they moved to Tampa, because when she sat across from me in St. Louis, she couldn't do the story working in the St. Louis market. So when they moved to Tampa, they tried to do it, and Monsanto sued them out the wazoo and shut that story down. So. People always say, uh, 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 yeah. Yeah. protein. You know, I'm an accomplished runner. We'll go into that in just a second. But I always go, does it look like I have a protein deficiency? <laughs> no, of course not. Do you know anybody who has a protein deficiency? No. no. Not a one. Thank you. Anybody know anybody with uh, cancer, heart disease, or diabetes? Uh -huh. yes. Yeah. Those are the issues we need to be asking and dealing with. So for me, I'm going to just go through this real briefly, only to serve as an inspiration and to show that you get plenty of protein and energy on a plant-based diet. Two golds in the National Senior Games in 2011. And what's really cool is that I found out that my current 100 meter times in the Senior Games are six seconds slower than NCAA girls who are on the USC track team. And there are their personal records right here at about 13 seconds and uh, I'm right at 19 on mine. So it, it varies between 18 and 20, depending on how fast I actually can get it done. But the cool thing is, uh, I know this, this comes right out of the media guide, because my daughter was on the track team last year. So I got the media guide and was able to look at this. Three golds this year, the next day, place first in my age group. And those are some of the 28 medals that I have gotten since 2008 in my age group. Um, and in this race, I actually got sixth overall female, which is crazy. That means I'm beating all these other kids. I mean, granted, it wasn't the world's hugest race, but there were a lot of kids in this race. So um, what does a healthy vegan diet look like? Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. Have you all heard of them? Mm -hmm. Yes, good. OK, so you're familiar with what this means. Financially, here's what it translates to. It's 20 cents a serving for a serving of fruit, 10 cents a serving for beans, as we have seen. We're going to do more math, just because I love math, range, 4 cents an ounce, so that's about 12 cents. Now look what happens when you put things in boxes. It gets more expensive, 15 cents an ounce. Quinoa, 41 cents an ounce, although I found it cheaper online at $1.66 a pound, which is 10 cents an ounce. So you can shop around and try and find some better bargains. Whole grains, up to 10 cents a serving. So when you're saving all this money, when you throw out the meat and dairy in your diet, you have all this money left over to buy fruits and vegetables. Broccoli, but are you know, are vegetables really that expensive? Broccoli here at 11 cents an ounce, and I just check these prices all the time, go around with my little iPhone, and I'm really amazed I haven't been thrown out of stores, but you know, it's all good process. <laughs> Cabbage is always a bargain, and I'm just going to breeze through some tips out of my book here. 50 cents each for a cucumber, very cheap. Spaghetti squash, how many of you eat spaghetti squash? You can get four meals out of that if you stretch it with some good marinara sauce. Sweet potatoes can really fill you up. John McDougall, his wife Mary, has a whole sweet potato diet. That's how I lost my 25 pounds for, I hope, the last and final time. Are those, are those organic? Pardon? No, the book is not about organics, other than I do deal with that, how you can get cheap organics, but none of these are organic. So, so this is again, like mainstream, like trying to get mainstream America. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, exactly right. Uh, and I know that many of you probably already eat this way, but here's the thing. Neil Barnard talks about my book in his, his, his talks around the country now because he says that eating vegan is, the perception that is, it is expensive is the last holdout that people have. And so I'm really out there just trying to blow up this myth. 
So I never used to like beet greens, but found that my CSA, my great species, that was just delicious and this uh, variegated color here, that the greens actually tasted salty and sweet. And I asked the farmer about that, and he says, yeah, it's just the, the way this particular one is. So uh, cherry tomatoes, uh, Roma tomatoes are actually the cheapest form of tomatoes. Carrots, a nickel an ounce. Uh, colored peppers are going to be more expensive than the greens. And I want you to be focused on looking at the unit price. These are tomatoes, but always be careful. Careful, buyer beware. $50 an ounce, <laughs> it says for those tomatoes, and that was a mistake. So just make sure you're checking. Probably hothouse tomatoes. Yeah, exactly. 53 cents a pound for bananas, so let's do a little fun math. A banana weighs about a half a pound, so we're going to put it in a smoothie with a little peanut butter. 12 cents for the peanut butter, uh, frozen banana 26, soy milk 16 cents, and that gives us to about 54 cents a serving with the blueberries adding 50 cents, and even some greens at 25 cents. $1.29, give or take, compared to four to nine dollars for a restaurant smoothie. Now, I have prices in my recipes and people say, well, we live in California, it's so expensive here. I live in Southwest Florida near Sarasota. I am hoping that my prices are some of the most expensive prices in the country. So my prices hopefully will match your prices here. If they don't, I still say the recipes, the hundred recipes in my book are the cheapest vegan recipes out there. It's the way I've eaten. Now, what would you rather have for 25 cents an ounce here? These low in the dark muffins? <laughs> <laughs> or these sponge cake things that bounce against the wall? <laughs> oh, we can't forget Paula Dean. Well, Look at how much her right. cake costs 25 cents an ounce, and just in a short period of time, it's jumping up to 27 cents an ounce, so no bargain especially when it has an expiration date. But look at all the stuff you get for it, that $8. <laughs> <laughs> Diet glycerides, I don't even know what those are. Okay, or the chocolate surprise cake in my book. Now, I'm gonna ask a question. How many of you already have my book? A few of you, excellent. Thank you very much. You cannot answer the next question. What's in this cake? Avocado. Avocado. Mm. Cocoa. Cocoa. Mm. Applesauce. Applesauce. Mm. Carrots. Carrots, yeah. Beets. Ooh, you're the first person to ever guess. There they are. Beets, oh, pineapple days, the carrots are on the other side. So, and, and zucchini also. And, wow. and the zucchini. So, this is a great one. If you have one of those tough to please hubbies or significant others, my hubby still doesn't know what's in this cake. <laughs> back to um, make it come back. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I don't know what he did. No, it shouldn't be there. Yeah. 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 Or the 50 cents a serving sweet potato muffins. And this was also 50 cents a serving there. This is the way the recipe looks in the book. What would you rather have? A coffee cake with an expiration date at $2.97, um, or a vegan crisp at $2. Look what happens when you start processing dairy and putting it in packages. Remember, beans cost a dime a serving, a nickel an ounce. 7.4 cents for the yogurt, 28 cents for the cheese, because you're putting it in two different packages, so you gotta pay somebody to do that. <laughs> Dairy is getting um, fairly price competitive now with the alternative milks. It's getting there. It's a ways to go, but uh, it's getting there. 18 cents for nature's greatest fast food, fruit. So there are apricot, apricots. You can spend a little more for fruits, buy berries when they're in season and freeze them. Apples are still a great bargain at 11 cents an ounce. So an apple weighs about two ounces, so it's not all that expensive. Now, what I talk about is not only how much money you save at the store, but how, by how much money you save with avoiding disease. So in the U.S., an angioplasty rated at $20,000 compared to India. I won't go through all these, but you can go find them yourself at healthindiatourism.com. <laughs> India knows that they can do all these surgeries much more cheaply. And they, there's a whole medical tourism business out there trying to get you to go there to get the surgery. And if you click on that, you can pick a hospital you'd like to go to. And if we click on Apollo Hospital in Bangalore, and you will see the actual hospital 
and they are estimating that a bypass surgery there is sixty thousand dollars in the U.S. And in India, it's so much cheaper. And if you click on that green promotional quote, you will get six days of treatment, including one day in ICU. Such a bargain. <laughs> no other nation spends more than 12% of its total economy on health care, but the U.S. is up to 17%. Preventable disease is not sustainable. I do this because I've seen so much pain and suffering in my family. It shouldn't happen here. It shouldn't happen anywhere. Oh, I want to get back to the $1,000 burger. If you dollar cost average, borrow the phrase from financial services and financial planning, dollar cost average, the $100,000 bypass surgery, which is what it really costs when you include follow-up care, by every hamburger you eat in your life, depending how many hamburgers you eat, that $5 restaurant burger is really $1,000 or, all right, I'll give you $100. But that's what I hope that people will really start thinking about, is how much it costs. Now, my big dream in life is that the food stamp program would go to a plant-based diet, and we could save $24 billion a year. I am not holding my breath for that to happen anytime soon. In my book, I have this chart that's actually making its way uh, around Facebook and other places. People are taking pictures of it, because it really does illustrate the point. Now, I did work at media training for the National Watermelon Promotion Board. $1.6 million of the federal USDA checkoff program. So if you buy a watermelon, a few pennies go into the slush fund to promote advertising for that product. You look at the top, dairy products, $281 million, followed by fluid milk, which is a whole separate wow. category, $107 million for advertising. Beef is right under that at $79 million. So this is why when you walk into your kids' or grandkids' cafeteria, you don't see posters that say, got broccoli? Uh -huh. Or broccoli, it's what is for dinner. No, you don't see that. I'm going to get to questions at the end. Um, so we have one choice to improve our health care costs and our health itself, which will improve health care costs. So some ideas from the book. I'm a big, I'm a big believer in combining beans and grains. And you can do it a lot of different ways. Smoothies are a great way to satisfy the sweet tooth. We are born with one of the best sweet teeth, sweet tooths, sweet teeth in nature. Um, Mother, Mother Nature really wanted to make sure that we got our mama's milk, and that's why there is more sugar in breast milk than any other mammal out there. And it's paid off, at least so far, in the species. We're still working on that. But you can satisfy the sweet tooth with fruit and smoothies. Um, just some other money-saving ideas, and these are all in the book. Corn tortillas are cheaper than the bigger wheat tortillas, so if you're looking for a way to save, and those are, this have um, lime juice as a preservative. What would you rather have? Pay these um, six cents for seasoned fries in a bag, or get the real potato at two cents an ounce? Or you can buy a back box thing like this, and I think those are potatoes underneath there at 22 cents an ounce. And you know, as I take pictures of these things, people start walking into my shop. I don't look for this, I don't plan it. I can't tell here who is the healthcare provider and who is the patient. It's so sad. And I just want to run up to these people and say, there's a great deal on beans two aisles over. Follow me. But I don't do that. And when you look in the, in the baskets, it really does tell the story. And this is why I wrote the book. I was really hoping to reach people who are so devastated, or their caregivers who are so devastated. This was a guy waiting for fried chicken at the grocery store. It looks like he's already lost a limb or two to diabetes. And there are Twinkies. As I say in the introduction to my book, the Twinkies made me do it. <laughs> 15 cents an ounce, they're no bargain either. Now, what I'm gonna be serving today is a very simple recipe from my book. It is, uh, my version of Cocoa Puffs. It's much cheaper, and here, this is interesting, you can see they look like, and one of the tips of my book is not to buy the name brand, but to buy the store brand, but in this case, this is a smaller package, so it makes you think that the box is cheaper, but if you look at the price per ounce, 25 cents an ounce and 25 cents an ounce there. So look at the unit price, and I'm gonna go through some other tips here. Oh, also, this is what's, what you get for your extra money there. And my recipe is so much cheaper. So now that you've seen this, you are all certified to be broccoli right now. Uh -huh. I mentioned, uh, some of you came in late, I'm a certified uh, 
alpha certified personal trainer, same as Jillian. I'm also a certified running coach, and I coach high school girls across the country. And part of my passion is just working with kids and getting them to see that you can be healthy on a plant-based diet. So these are tips right out of the book. I have three pages of resources in the back of my book to tell you where to go to get things cheaply. So the best tips are keep a list, buy in bulk, shop the circumference. Why? It's all fresh. It's all fresh. And the stuff is, the middle is um, very processed. Check the top and the bottom because the advertisers are paying for you to see the middle. Uh, eye level, more expensive processed foods. Store brands, uh, we mentioned that earlier, that they can be cheaper, though not always. Pay with cash. Nice. Now, in my work as a consumer reporter, for people who are really on a tight budget, you put the amount of cash you have for the month in an envelope, you take it out by the week, and that is what you pay for everything in your life. If you're not that strict, you can certainly just put it aside for food, and that is what you pay for food. Keeping a, keeping a very tight record of what you are spending is so important. Keep receipts so you can track the prices, and then, of course, cook, for scrap, cook from scratch. Now, people go, oh my gosh, do I have to find my way back into the kitchen? Do I have to cook? It takes so much time. <laughs> Many of the recipes in my book are from the days when I was a single working mom, and I had three kids, just wanted to get food on the table in a hurry at the end of the day. You don't have time for cancer, diabetes, and heart disease. I have lived with that in my family so up close and personal. At hospitals, my family would say, oh, I wonder what wing we donated this month. Or it was the scene of our family reunion because people would congregate as somebody was going through a near-death experience. And, you know, it's that kind of stuff that entire generations are losing each other. My parents were so sick and diseased by the time I had kids, they couldn't lift my kids up, let alone babysit them. And we're just losing each other, and we don't even know it. That's one of my favorite running paths where I live. And that's my photographic time, time warp journey as I was uh, 150 pounds. And then as I started running and eating more of a plant-based diet, they have so much energy on a plant-based diet. I did my first marathon in 2010. I was the fifth oldest female to finish the Palm Beaches Marathon. I felt like I could keep running. One thing a plant-based diet doesn't cure is flat feet. So my feet did not feel like they could be running, but uh, it's amazing how much energy, and I keep hearing this from other people who use a plant-based diet to improve their athletic performance. So it's all about being around for the kids, the grandkids, I've been saying for years, and of course Bill Clinton started quoting me back in 2010. Uh, that's when he made his uh, appearance for the first time on CNN with Larry King and said he had come out of his plant-based closet and his health is so greatly improved, which it was about the same time my book came out, a little bit later. So it really, all of this great publicity about celebrities and people improving their health, it, it really has fueled this movement, and I know a lot of us uh, authors are really experiencing the benefit of that because the, the public is so hungry for this information. Those are the kids I help uh, train cross country. These are some of the best resources out of the back of my book, my website, vegcoach.com. Vegan Bodybuilding, Robert Cheek, great author. We sell the book out at, um, at Book Publishing's booth, and that's where I'm going to be after this. If you want to get a signed copy, I'm happy to uh, address your individual questions too there. But being in bodybuilding, anytime somebody says, you know, where do you get the protein, I send them to Robert's, Robert Cheek's site because he has such hunky guys and gals, and it really shows that you can eat well on a plant-based diet and, and develop muscles as well. You know, as a runner, I don't want to be bulked up because that's extra weight I have to tote around, so. Uh, when I work with personal training clients, we figure out what is actually best for them. Localharvest.org, we've mentioned Seeds of Change, a great place to get some hopefully un-GMO'd, untainted seeds and some other sites there. The last one I'll mention is NutritionMD.org. Anybody on that site? Um, good. It's a, a menu planning, recipe planning site that's free from PCRM. A lot of people charge for that information, but they're doing a great job. All right, uh, if we can turn on the lights, and I think we've got the Cocoa Puffs. Sir, and again, this is my most simplest recipe, and I created that just because I've, been, I've done enough of these things, I don't like to get too complicated, and I think I'm going to run to the back here, and I'm going to ask you all to, this is the aerobic part of the presentation, so I'm just going to show you what I've done. It's not very complicated at all. Can turn it here? Thank you. 
walk into the main uh, exhibition hall, and it's book publishing is where I'll be. So please feel free. And my website, if you don't find me here, vegcoach.com. So puff corn, this is non-GMO. I posted this this morning on my Facebook page saying that I was going to be doing this recipe, and somebody, of course, right away goes, is it GMO uh, free puff corn? Yes, it is. But this is still cheaper than the stuff that I showed you. So we also, we're going to have um, several servings. Um, um, uh, we have both, uh, you'll get um, one of these and then also the puff wheat, which is in this bag here. And what you do, and I think my serving spoon has here, so we'll just, I mean, 15 more minutes. 15 more minutes. 15 more minutes. So two minutes, okay. So we'll have time for questions. So you'll use about a tablespoon of cocoa, and we're just going to guess here, because I'm pretty good at this. And then you just pour the soy or the almond milk, whatever milk you're wanting to use, and then cut up a banana in it, which uh, this just gives you an idea. And we, we've, uh, like we said, we have two trays of the corn, so it's going to look like this. And we've already poured the milk in it. And I think what's going around first is the soy milk, I believe. Soy milk is going to be a little sweeter. And I didn't put the bananas in here, so just imagine that it's a little sweeter. You can add cinnamon if you like as well. So let's go ahead and open it up for questions. And by the way, this is the simplest recipe in the book, but all the recipes are pretty simple because once you start getting more complicated, exotic foods, you've got to go to Whole Foods more, then it gets more expensive. And, and the real message here is that all these stores have all these ingredients and it works for us. And as a personal trainer, I really do find that people vary quite a bit by their individual needs and what they can do. Uh, any other questions? All right, so you all are going to run out to the grocery store and do this on $4 a day. Oh, yeah. well, I also said, one more thing, um, I'm on Facebook. The book has its own Facebook page, so I say if you buy the book, it entitles you to a lifetime access to me on Facebook. What's the name of the Facebook? And uh, the Facebook page is Eat Vegan on $4 a day, and I'm always there trying to answer questions and be helpful or refer people to other sites that I don't know. All right, I'll see you all.